to Let's Talk Art. And I just want to say hello to everybody that's tuned in today. And those of you who would like to share our show, you can just hit share and it'll go out to uh, many of your friends. Uh, today we are talking about the art of conversation. And uh, we'll get to that part in a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say that I was off last week and I got to go to Cleveland to see my kids and uh, my grandchildren, I got to hug them, and the weather was just amazing. I guess I brought the Florida sunshine with us, and all the tulips were popping up, and you never know, tomorrow there could be a snowstorm. But it, we were just so lucky to have great weather, and we went to parks, and we did so many nice things, and, um, and having two shots right now is very rewarding, so I, I, I'm just so happy. And also, um, last week, I, when I got back, I got to meet John Douglas in person. And of course, uh, if you saw, saw the show about him, he's a major drummer on Aerosmith. And he also is an incredible artist. I got to see his artist up front, personal, and got to meet him. And I, I was just so thrilled. He's such a nice guy. Um, so hello, uh, John, if you're watching the show today. And uh, so also, um, I'm doing a little new concept today. I have three wonderful ladies that are joining me, and they're all artists because this is Let's Talk Art, and we will discuss that. And But be, with all of that said, we have my famous friend, Andreas. Hello, Hello Andreas. We're going to put you there. You are Andreas from uh, OMG uh, Floral Boutique. Flower Boutique. Flower Boutique. Well, you can be floral if you'd like to be today. <laughs> because you, you just have the most amazing flowers. And what we did this week is we decided to, or I decided, <laughs> to um, bring three beautiful paintings of my artist friends that are here and show them to um, Andreas. And he was the one to decide which one would be his creation. So as you can see to the right in the back there, um, we have uh, Bar uh, Barbara Silver's painting, who, who he chose to do the floral. And I will be introducing the artist uh, in a few minutes. And I can't wait to see what he's going to come up with because, um, you know, there's such gorgeous flowers out there. And he knows he's the man to find them to, to uh, give the most beautiful creation. And also, I want to say about OMG, if anybody um, is watching the show and you'd like to order flowers, just mention the Brooklyn Cafe or Amy Reshevsky, and I'm sure he'll work something out, maybe uh, free delivery or whatever, but he will know that you're calling because of the show. And I just adore having him on the show because we get to create the most beautiful things. And he is an artist for sure. So I'm going to making this nice and short and simple because we have a lot to talk about with the girls because you know how ladies are we're like the view we're going to talk 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 okay so we're going to take a quick commercial and when we get back we're going to set up and we're going to go forward so we'll see you in a few minutes
Sigma on the beat. <laughs>
It's just something that we share. It's a passion. It's really hard to explain. But when you love to paint and you're social, you want to be talking about art, showing your art, um, sharing your art. Um, one of the reasons I chose the painting I did is because it, it's a rainy day. It's called Dancing in the Rain. And most people associate rainy days with gloom and doom and no sunshine. But for me, there's always a silver lining. There's always a ray of sunshine. So when I paint walking in the rain, dancing in the rain, I have a series. Um, it's just talking about the silver lining in life. Um, this has been a difficult year for many people, including myself. Um, and I always said, if I didn't paint, I think I would have gone crazy. It was my sanity. Absolutely. I was painting. I was teaching painting. And that was my joy. Right. And we're very lucky to have that, um, to keep us focused or calm down. And, and you paint with very bold colors, very bright. And I think I met you the first time. Did I meet you at the art show? And then you ended up at the gallery where we all were? That's work. right. Yeah. You were my connection. You said, come and see this gallery. <laughs> That's right. Come. That's right, and I followed you there, and I followed you into a, a show in West Palm right, where I right. met Deborah as well. Right, and um, it's great. We're and, as, and as you said, um, artists are have something about each other that they can deep down share, and it doesn't matter what type of artist. You just you just know that you can be close to them and and say anything or ask them a question about a medium or something and and you have their audience or you have them I mean and, and it also gives us a chance to be able to talk about something about ourselves because a lot of times um, you meet new people and like what do you say I so we always have that angle um, so I'm so grateful you're here and thank you thank you for the okay opportunity. and then we have Miss Deborah Rader, who Deborah and I go back um, many years now, and we were partners in crime. Yeah, we were both actually partners <laughs> in, in a lovely studio up the street from where we are right now, and we seem to keep going full circle, all, all kinds of things. And um, and I, I've been always tr trying to drag her in to help me more, but you know, one day maybe she will um, to help again because we just, yeah, not we're we're sugar and and water. We're nice and sweet, so. Anyway, <laughs> so Deborah, uh, welcome, and you want to say a little bit about yourself? Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me here, and it's I'm so excited to be here with my fellow artists, and um, we just share so much, and we love to bounce ideas off of each other. We love to share our work to each other. We've all had um, paths coming down that led us to today, and um, about myself, I'm I'm a Michigan born and raised artist that. Um, did uh, mostly graphic design and uh, made our move to Colorado and um, where I where we live near the rodeo horses so I am basically a figurative artist I love the figure of the humans I love the figure of the horses of animals whatever whatever inspires me I love to um, uh, be the observation of the human condition I love old photographs I love anything that stirs um, some creativity in myself so um, I'm just happy to show my work here and bring the the West meets East from the mountain horses now um, I got acquainted and uh, very interested with the polo horses here so there's horses everywhere so um, I like to touch it with a contemporary flair and um, my um, my process is constantly changing and I work in many mediums Wonderful. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank for you. having me. So, you know, since this is a, a, a new concept for me with having uh, lovely uh, ladies join me, I, I thought we would um, turn it into a, a little chat while Andreas is back there uh, creating. And um, uh, actually, we're, we're also uh, lunch buddies, too, so we, we talk about a lot of things. <laughs> and it, it's just nice to have everybody here. So we were talking about at lunch um, the different types of art and what we really call art. Um, and I don't, I, I know Barbara, um, you brought it up and I know that it's um, something that you probably could explain a little better. I mean, we all understand what you're gonna say, but 
um, when it comes to art and digital and the new uh, modern processes that are popping up everywhere. And uh, I don't, they're not, comp they're, I wouldn't say they're really competition. I would just say that they're just a different medium versus our natural uh, drawing and painting and uh, you know what comes out of us, not out of a machine. So how, how do you really feel about this? Well, so an analogy that comes to my mind as we're sitting here is like pennies and bitcoins. I don't know what a bitcoin is. <laughs> I can't even imagine what it is. I don't understand how one uses it as a means of currency. So I'm going to leap from that. We can tell you about that. We have a show on Okay, it. <laughs> we'll do that. That's a whole show in itself. It is. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leap from that to the fact that both Deborah and Rosie pointed to the fact that an artist is about passion. Okay, right. so passion means different things to different people. Digitizing a piece of art, to me personally, and apparently to Rosie and Amy and Deborah, is not about passion. It's about tech. So one of the controversies among artists today is, is digital art really art? Right. So, um, what do you think, Rosie? Do you think that, um, I mean, it, it's, it's a industry of its own. I mean, people are so drawn to digital art and, and they could take their own painting and then move it into a digital kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I, I just don't know if, yeah. yeah there is a difference between being tech savvy and being an artist. Okay, because I couldn't do digital art if I wanted to. 100%. That, right? Yeah. right? Right. So it's an art form. But it's almost like when I started doing figurative art, someone said, well, you can get tracing paper and you can copy it onto your canvas. But to me, that felt like cheating. Mm -hmm. Right? I felt that I had to look. I had to really see and feel it. in order to put it on paper. On, I couldn't copy. That didn't feel like real art. So it's almost the same thing. Right. It has its place, and I'm sure those that do it feel that it's, you know, an art form. But it's. Well, what about the value later on? Oh, actually, we have somebody in the audience. <laughs> I got a question. Okay. Artists are artists, but now you become business people to sell your art. That's Freddie, by the way. <laughs> this is the other side, digital arts. The major league baseball players are getting into that as well. They're putting their baseball cards, their pictures, everything digitally. And what's happening is they are raising so much money for doing it because people want, they don't just want um, Amy's picture, they want to be able to to install in Amy's future. So you sell futures on this thing. But my question to the artists in the room, you are now become business people. It's like doctors now, all of a sudden, you doctors have become business people. How do you keep your art alive? How do you keep yourself alive if you decide not to be business people and artists? I think that's a great question. We were talking about it at lunch. Because given the choice, all of us would rather be in our studio painting. Am I right, girls? Right, 100%. Right. You are. right? And, um, and then we have to think about yeah. when are we going to market our art? How are we going to market our art? Right? Right. Oh, There's okay. so many venues. And how much do you spend right. to market your art? It's a good question. But I haven't. Know, it, it takes on an even larger posture, Freddie, to your point, because. Art galleries are going out of business, left and right. Um, the museums are suffering, okay. The pandemic was probably the origin of that. But um, very successful museums are being wiped out right now because they don't have the philanthropic background and the dollars that they need. So I guess what I'm saying is there's a bigger picture here, even beyond our being businesswomen, which I can tell you definitively that the four of us do not want to be, okay? <laughs> you know, to Rosie's point, we want to be, you know, have art on our, you know, have paint on our legs and, you know, and just like do our thing. 
So I think the larger issue here, and probably maybe for another forum, is what's happening to art in general. Yeah, I, I, I think I've been reading that art is picking up now. Um, and, and what Freddie touched on was the, um, what did you call it, the, how you, you're taking the art and then you're exposing it in different ways. Digital futures, Dig well, yeah. Yeah, digital it. futures. So a lot of, most artists don't even understand what a digital future is, but, um, you know, so it, they take it and, and what, explain that a little bit more. I know well, what's, you, what's happening is art is taking a life of its own. It's going in a different path, a different direction. Like you ladies in here are artists. And what we're trying to do now is we're creating your art and, and putting music in front of it. We have music shows coming up and they want to see that stage the way it looks now. And the only way to do that is to have artists like yourselves put the art up there. Then it shows up in commercials, it shows up on TV. It shows up on reality shows. There are no longer the galleries anymore. Now there are many galleries. Right. This is what this is. Right. It's a garage with art in it. Why? <laughs> because you take somebody like Amy and we go out to the public and we do pop-ups. The door wants to do a pop-up for artists. We're going to combine music with it. We're going to combine film with it. We're going to ask California to take a look at that because they don't have the monies right now to make big movies. They have monies to make small reality shows. So everybody in this room becomes a player. Right. That's what digital futures are doing right now. It's changing the game of how you present your art. Now, you can go back and be an artist, and you talk to certain people in the business, but they're going to expose you like you're doing today. Interviews, very important for the artist now. Because you got to get above the level of everybody else. They exactly. want to know who's making the art. What's the story behind the art? How many people do you know take a jacket or a dress and make it an art piece? It's ridiculous. Nobody's ever seen that before, but you have to expose it. Right. You sell your art because of who you are. Right, but I do love, I love that concept. And that's where we're taking the digital side and moving it into a different art, art piece. You know, we were just talking about the digital you see on everybody's computers, but we're talking about taking this to many more levels. Um, and exposure is going to be dynamite, I think. Like the $67 million level of the digital painting that just sold in New York, which everyone was like, wow. But then I'm thinking while Freddie is talking about Andy Warhol and how everybody responded when they saw a can of Campbell's soup. Exactly. Is this different, Freddie? It's not. He, went, he was brave enough to do what you ladies have started today. You know, I'm going to tell you something. Nobody, when I started doing streaming 12 years ago, nobody knew what it meant. Now it's the hottest thing in the world. If I have three TVs turning in a circle here and your digital art on there forbid, mm -hmm. you'd be shocked what's going to come forward. You don't know what the public wants. You're so accustomed to making a piece of art, selling it one drop at a time, but you're not exposing it to the millions of people who look at it. And all of a sudden you go, what the hell is going on here? That's the business side of what you guys are doing. 100%. And, and you know what, Amy? We talked about this five years ago. Yeah. This ain't new. No. We it's talked just, about it five years ago. It's just coming together more now. That's because people are beginning to say, say, we have to find different ways of showcasing what you do. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, good point. And a very exciting one, actually. So um, I think... Um, Can we open it, up camera three? Because what he's doing is amazing. Oh, I can't wait for camera mm -hmm. three. Oh, yeah. Andreas. It's really breathtaking. Gorgeous. Can we open it up? You should see, oh, you should yeah, see what it smells like over here. Holy <laughs> smokes. You know, Amy, I got to tell you, nobody does art the way you do. And I know that when we started this thing, we took a shot. Everybody's talking about your show. Everybody. And we're going to expand the show time today, and it has to keep going. But you have to understand, you have to believe not only in your artistic value, you have to believe in the message you're sending out. So many people right now, they need to crawl, what is it, under the rock? Under Get out from under the rock? Yeah. And art and music are the way to go. We've talked about this for a year and a half. We have never shut down. No. Nope. You've always been with us since the very beginning. Yep, and we're building, building, building. That's right. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yep. No, this is amazing. So I didn't see camera three yet. Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> oh, that is That's beautiful. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, we, it's, wow. Yeah, I, it's far for, hard for us to see it. OMG. OMG in the house. OMG in the house. So uh, I hope some of you have. Oh, there we go. I wanted to see that. Upset. Oh, gorgeous. Look at the colors. Magnificent, really. Wow. Andre, just magnificent. Can you tell, ask him about the inspiration and how he's translating? You got a mic over there? My inspiration? Yes. Yeah. What inspired you about it? Well, can I ask for a question first? Yeah, go ahead. I, I know there were three choices. You had three different color schemes, and your your senses went to this one. Yeah. And so explain that. <laughs> I was drawn to the blue, right? Like the first thing you see when you see this painting is, is the blue, the blue and the black, right? And and the majority of the painting is white, which gives me room to, to work with. like. Like a blank canvas color. Exactly, yeah. So like most of the most of the arrangement is gonna be white and uh -huh. then I put a little bit of uh, deep blue, a little bit of the, the, the light purple, a little bit of the black. What is that things. blue flower, Andre? So this one it's uh it's called a blue dendrobium orchid. Orchid. Right? Ah. Beautiful. And then this one is a, a green cymbidium orchid and I spray painted it with uh, this type of blue, like a turquoise color. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're all real flowers, all natural, just a little bit of paint here and there, but uh, these are anthuriums, which is uh, one of my favorite flowers. Cause Mine too. They make the arrangement look elegant, yeah. you know? So, no, yeah, it's, gonna talk it's coming you. along. I'm going to put a couple of different things now, and, and it should be done. I'm going to try to incorporate the black in it. So we'll see. That's, That's a challenge. Before actually, That's so a challenge. Yeah. We'll see what happens. You know, it's amazing how a, a gentleman who deals with flowers is an artist. hundred percent. Definitely. And you, and you put music to this thing. If I lean love, I will have her be wait. playing music on this yeah. thing as well. What are you using for the black? Just these um, the spiral things. Like spiral cable looking thing, you know. Okay. Just we love try spirals. To, try to do something crazy with it and then just add it into the thing. What's so interesting, Andre, is I think when the three of us or the four of us, I really should say, paint, we do the very same thing. We experiment with articles that people would probably never believe that you would use to create a painting. Absolutely. You know? It could be dirt. So look, I just came up with this. Or sand. Coffee. Exactly. Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just did this yeah. here, and, and hopefully, you know, it'll look good when I put it in. <laughs> I think it will. <laughs> when it's all done. It's great. I'm sorry? Go a little bit of black in there. I don't know. Do the same thing. Oh, sure. Okay. You know what? We're going to take a little commercial right now um, because uh, we can't wait to see what um, Andreas is doing, and we'll come back with some more The View talk. <laughs> commercial? Ladies, we're back. Hey, ladies. <laughs> Our lunch is over. We're still, no, I'm teasing you. <laughs> um, so uh, as far as uh, conversations that we normally have about art and what's around town, is there, is there anything that, that's going on that anybody knows about? Yeah, I was wondering about the outdoor art shows. Are they starting again? I know there's one open, the one that usually at the Delray Affair, mm -hmm. I believe that they're doing it in the Boynton Mall, Mall parking lot. Oh. So I just I heard that because I know one of the artists that used to win all the awards for her her poster for the for the Delray Fair uh, put something up on um, 
Facebook yesterday. So I, I believe that that's going on. In um, April. Yeah, in April. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, I guess people are getting a little more um, at ease going out to something like that now if you have your shots. So, you know, well, we'll see where that goes. But I feel like things are opening up a little bit. Um, we have to be really cautious because, you know, there's, with these kids that are everywhere, um, it's, it's a little bit hard because they're not really... They're not you know, vaccinated. They're not. They're not. And I know also in Canada, it's a lot different up there, too. It's very strict, so you're not going anywhere. So um, it, it, things, are, <laughs> things are turning. I had to come south down to Florida to get out of the closet. Out of the closet. Oh, no, no, I'm so glad you did. So I've been locked indoors. Yeah. Even if you want to go out, there's nowhere to go. Everything was shut down. Right. There's so, a lot of pandemic art also that's yeah, so out. We, yeah, we could talk about that. I mean, there was so much, so many of us have spent so much time, like uh, you girls said, at home, and we, we uh, have done so much work that we're all got the build up. And, and that's not just for us, but it's all across the board. It's, it's made and some what artists. What to do with that is another story. So hopefully, you know, you know Freddie's got good angles, and, um, right. and we, we have to just change our, our way. And I, I think during the pandemic, for myself and probably for each of you, um, art has been my happy place. So where others were kind of pulling out their hair, mm -hmm. you know, I think that we us. are very fortunate because we had a place to turn where we could still uh, feed ourselves and relish time and really allow ourselves, you know, to enjoy, mm -hmm. which I almost feel guilty saying, but you get my drift, right. you know, not everyone is as fortunate. I totally agree with you. It really kept my sanity. And when I counted the amount of paintings that I did in the season, oh my goodness, that was like two years worth of paintings. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And it's a good time to experiment with new styles oh, also. Yeah. You know, because my work has evolved in different ways during this time. And, um, you know, knowing what our possible future options are for future shows, you know, such as Art Basel, is that going to be postponed again? All these unanswered questions. I know like the New York Art Expo is being moved instead of April to November this year, or just how things, you know, we have to go with the flow with, with the future shows. And You uh, haven't heard the news. What's the news? What's the news? We're doing Boca Basel. Oh, right. Right? Well, right. Boca, Boca Basel. Basel, I love that yes. idea. Newsflash. <laughs> Amy came up with this idea, what was it, two months ago? I guess, I don't know. Maybe tell us, know. tell us. We can do no, it. You gotta look at her because you got four ladies in here who are artists. If you open the door and you build it, what are we saying? They People will come. will come. That's yeah, right. We need a warehouse here with art and piano. So. Yeah, we, we have the most amazing uh, setup here. Every room has art in it. Um, and of course, we do many shows here, so um, the art gets moved around, so you get to see it. And but you know, like Freddie said, the art, the music, the the promotion, the the, commer the commercials, the the people that come on the show, and uh, it's just it's such an, a great place to be. And, and we're really hoping that once we get this thing going, uh, everybody will come see, and we'll expand a little bit into our parking lot. <laughs> we have we have to plan that. Listen, we just signed a contract today. For 110 bands. Wow. 110 bands that are playing April 17th in D-Land. Oh my goodness. And they That's all want to come down and play. So Boca Basil it's is gonna be back. It's musical art. Right. Musical art. And you put all of that sensory thing stuff out there. Right. And you see what happens. Okay. I bet you you open the door and everybody will copy you. Yep, absolutely. But we got to do our niche and sneak in there. So we're, we're right on. Okay, so I look forward to that. That's going to be really a lot of fun. You girls, maybe we'll get in, into it. And, hey, our uh, next lunch. That will be our topic. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll plan our, it. Our Good next idea. show could be our Good topic. Idea. <laughs> I sure. just want to add something that is on my mind, and that is when Freddie was talking about the sensory experience of combining music and art and film, et cetera, I hope that that opens up to people the fact that you don't have to understand art. There's no understanding. Yeah, you need to enjoy it. You know, very often people will say, well, I really don't understand abstract art, which is what I do almost exclusively. And I will say, there's nothing here to understand. Just feel. Yeah. How are you doing back there, Andreas? I'm done, pretty oh, much. Oh, fabulous. OK. Right, give me one second. So um, when you're done, you want to bring it up? Yeah, absolutely. 
Okay, wonderful. Can you tell us how you got all the height in that, Andre? Well, these are uh, tall flowers anyway, so everything is touching the water, and they're just longer than the other ones. I see, so, so it's just the, the length of the stem. Just the uh -huh. length of the stem, yeah. Right. But Take I usually start down low, and Take I work my way up. Off here. Gotcha. <laughs> Now you make custom order jobs just like you do everything else. Right? I do everything. So if you go to my website, you're gonna see you're gonna have a feel for what we do, right? You could order directly through the website, or you could call me and be like, <coughs> I want something like this, but with different colors. Or or if you have an idea in mind, we'll make it happen. If you can dream it, we can make it. That's what we do. Well, I like um, that. Uh, yeah, our website is at omgflowerboutique.com. And you can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. It's the same, OMG Flower Boutique. And we uh, also did a wonderful show uh, a few weeks back um, with uh, OMG. And if you go to um, the, the YouTube uh, show, you can see some of his arrangements that, that he was showing also there. Oh and God, here it stunning. comes. And there, there's, there's one major arrangement oh, that stands that out, besides this one, of course. <laughs> Wow. Oh, oh, breath. Oh, breath my God. Really? Oh, my God, it's right. Yes. Oh, oh MG. Oh, is that beautiful? I love that these, is so these special. little wired touches in there. It's uh, so artistic. So, Andreas, tell us about the flowers. <laughs> yeah. So, for this particular arrangement, um, I used white hydrangeas, white roses, lilac tulips, blue dendrobium orchids, blue, I mean, green cymbidium orchids that I painted uh, with spray paint. Turquoise, oh, okay. and then I use, and then in there. the back I use the the white anteriums, mm -hmm. which makes the arrangement elegant, right? Um, and then the black things over here, just like a little Artistic cable. Touch. I just right now, I literally just put it together. Never done that before, mm -hmm. and just to complement the drawing, right? The painting. So Absolutely. perfect. It's gorgeous. So yeah, you guys. And it will last yeah. a few weeks. You guys will be the judge. Does it look like the painting? Do you, do you like it? Or? Okay, we got to judge this. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's start with the with the with the artist. What do you think? I think it is outrageous. Yeah. I love the proportions, how you incorporated, and actually designed the color yourself, and it totally complements my piece of art. And in fact, it's really no contest here, guys. <laughs> it's really fabulous. Thank, Thank you, you so it's much, It's a beautiful Andre. composition. Yeah. There's, there's one thing that I was going to say a few minutes ago, is that um, when, when um, oh, I have my mic. Yeah, Thank you, yes. Um, when you came on the show and we were showing some of, of your artwork, um, you showed us the, the number 70. Okay. And for me, I mean, to build, he had to build up the seven and the zero for a party, and I, it was so exquisite, filled with flowers. So if you have friends that are turning a certain number and you just don't know what to do, OMG. Yeah, that, that is one of my latest ventures, you oh, know, just so doing cool. letters and numbers. Right. And Ooh. they take a long time to make, but, right. but when, the, when it's done, it, li it gives it that wow factor, you know. So we, we do... We could do your name, or you could do right. your age, or, right. or, anything. or anything. Yeah, and I'd really. like to do some musical instruments. Absolutely, I can yeah. do that too. Yeah. For all my musicians that are becoming on the show. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. I like that. All right, well, so this has been an amazing show. I, I think um, uh, having having you girls, uh, having something you know to discuss on uh, the, the art connection with us has just been very powerful today. And, it, and thanks to OMG. Thank you for And uh, next week, uh, I have um, Chris Reisett, who is coming on the show, who is a master glass um, designer. So he's, you, when you see his work, you'll just say, oh, I need that in my home. It's just exquisite <laughs> work. Um, and I look forward to seeing everybody next week. And I want to thank Freddie and Dawn today and the staff and everybody. Thank you, Amy. And it's been a wonderful show. So thank I'll you. see you all thank next you. week. Thanks, Vinny. Thank you.